Whoa! Damn, there's a lot going on here. Bros, welcome back to another DJ Setup Review video. Yes, I took to my Facebook fan page as well as my YouTube community tab and I asked you guys to send in your setups for review. By the way, if you'd like to be featured in next week's video, we're going to be doing logo reviews. So if you have a company logo or a DJ logo that you'd like us to review in next week's video, please send it in at the email listed below. The faster that you send in your logo, the better your chances are of getting on the video. Once more, next week we're not going to be reviewing setups, we're going to be reviewing your DJ logos and business entertainment company logos. So please send those in at the email listed below. I want to send a huge shout out to everybody who sent in their setup for review this week and without further ado, let's jump right in to this review. First setup comes in from Brandon and Brandon has a very similar setup to the one that I personally have. So here we have, it looks like some uh, Rockville totems. These are the collapsible totems. By the way, if you guys are short on space and you do want to add totems to your uh, setup, I highly recommend those Rockville. Uh, also, I believe a DJ has one. So if you want to check them out, uh, I'll link them down below. I'm pretty sure this is what they are. I'm not sure if these are the a DJ ones or if these are the Rockville ones. But either way, it's a nice, clean setup. Got the facade with the black trim. Personally, not a fan of the black trim on the facade but it still looks good cables could use a bit of tidying up as you guys see there's a cable coming down from the speaker not a fan of that you should uh, really get some gaff tape and just tape it so that you hide your cables also when you're lighting up your facade what I would have personally done is I would have personally moved these lights to each uh, centerpiece here splitting up each of these kind of how the way I've been doing my setups if you guys have seen any of my recent gig logs so I would have moved this one here here, this one here and put another one here if you're short on lights this is a great way because you'll only need three as opposed to two uh, it does look like you were in a tent so it looks like you were a little bit cramped so cable management is a little bit tight uh, it does look like you're on dirt so you can't really tape but uh, we got to definitely do something about this cable here. That is a trip hazard. I also see a monogram, but I can't see where it's coming from. Maybe this cable is going to a projector of some sort, going to the monogram, but um, can't really tell. Luis Gerardo Hernandez desde Mexico. Shout out to you, Luis. Dope setup. I love what he's done here. Here's another uh, shot. Same thing, he's got that same facade. This actually looks like glass. This actually looks like uh, those things that buildings use. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen some buildings have like that uh, that crystallized glass. The only thing I'll say is just that the trussing is way, way too big for these TVs. Um, I would definitely look into getting bigger TVs and just, you know, you could probably get two big TVs as opposed to having four. So maybe sell these four and get two big ones as opposed to having four little ones. Wow, this one's cool. He sent in a lot of photos. So this is, a, this is a real, real Spanish DJ setup. Oh, he's got different versions. Okay, this one looks more like a club with the little um, screens. This one doesn't look too bad. And he's got that LED dance floor. Man, that LED dance floor looks fire. This, this one is dope. I like this one. Up next, we have Anton from Denmark. Anton, all right, it says uh, he's we reviewed his setups in the past. Um, and this is a nice, clean, simple setup. As you guys can see, he kept everything nice and tidy. Only thing that I have with this setup is uh, my pet peeve is just rolling the cables. That's not good for your cables. And uh, I don't like that Twizzler look that you get when you roll up the cables um, around the poles. Um, it looks like he did it up here, and it looks like he did it here. But this is honestly a nice setup. If you don't have a facade, this is a nice, clean setup. This is actually what my setup used to look like before I invested in a facade. Next setup up is from Pro School DJs. All right, Pro School DJs. Must have been a tough year for you because I know they definitely ain't having no school dances. Did you guys do any school dances this year? We have uh, two. Two T-bars and they're nice and even. I love that. Um, I hate when guys have two different T-bars set up in random places and the T-bars don't match. Whenever you have two T-bars, try to match them so that they're exactly the same. So you see you got one mover on one side and it looks like you got a, 
a wash mover on the other side and uh, I love this I love how there is symmetry on this I do see a laser which I'm personally not a fan of I'm pretty sure this is a laser so maybe I would just get rid of it or uh, if you do want to have that laser make sure you match it on this side you got a massive sound system here you got uh, four subs and two tops want to make sure you don't totally overkill your uh, your highs your vocals when you have this many subs so just be careful whenever you're doing something like this also I would have probably found a different spot for your fog machine haze machine I would have probably had hit that somewhere in inconspicuous so that it's not uh, an eyesore on your setup our next setup comes from DJ George all the way in Johannesburg South Africa shout out to all my South African viewers thank you so much for watching all the way down there in South Africa first off the only issue I have so far is uh, your cable I see a cable dangling again guys all you have to do is just get some tape you don't even need gaff tape you can use some electrical tape you do have the scrims but it kind of defeats the purpose of having a scrim when you can still see cables the other thing I would have done is I would have probably moved this light up um, I would have never actually put a moving uh, light underneath speakers it looks like these are moving heads I would personally never mount my moving heads like this got you off in a corner so I can't really tell much on your setup Frank Lopez from Corona California all right Frank what do we have here it looks like you weren't done setting up before you took this picture Frank it's actually pretty clean except for your cable management now I will give you this I personally use sparklers it looks like you have the sparks here it can be tough to hide the cables on the sparklers however you at least at least need to tape these up what I would have done is if you had to daisy chain I would have probably ran this cable to here and use the power that I use for this to go here and then just put a piece of tape there and run power to here same thing you guys use for here the speakers and the totems and plugged it in here and then taped up behind taped up behind that way you don't have this cable running along the middle Belinda from Illinois all right Belinda what do we have here you got one of those uh, dragon front board facades this is a really cool facade I'm digging this I love what you did with uh, with the t-bars I don't know if this is just the way you uh, you took your picture but I really do like the way the T-bar looks like it comes out of your uh, Evolve 50s. Uh, these totems are big, really big. I wonder what type of totems these are. These homemade totems, they look really boxy. It looks good. The only thing I don't like is I don't like the moving heads here on the ground. Uh, I don't like that. And also, these totems are a little bit boxy. But man, this is really symmetrical, really clean. You did a great job, Belinda. Wow, look at that. DJ Tappy. DJ Tappy. What do we have going on here? You did a pretty awesome job. This looks like exactly like one of my setups. Um, you got the, the Chauvet Intimidators up here. Got the speakers on top. This is a clean, clean setup. My only thing is you got to be careful with uh, self-promotion at events. I could give you the benefit of the doubt and say that you only had this running when you took this picture or for the picture. I personally have done this in the past where I take the picture and uh, I have my logo on it. But then when it actually comes time for the event, then we got to switch it up. You got to place the whoever's name it is that we're celebrating, whether it's the bride and groom, the birthday girl, bar mitzvah uh, whatever it may be you got to use these TVs for them not for you you got to remember that this is not for a uh, self promo also if you want to check out my TV visuals pack if you want to have visuals going to your music check out my TV visuals pack I'll list it in the description of this video you'll get some nice graphics to play when you're actually playing music so that you don't have to display names or logos if you want to go that route next setup comes from Frank Pino and uh, this is gonna be a tough one to review because these photos are very small. I like these trees. These Christmas trees are dope. Uh, aside from that, uh, I can't really see your setup, man. It's actually pretty clean, but again, I can't see much of it. I can't critique it as well as I would like it to. I do see that you have some movers. Again, guys, not a fan of putting movers on tripod, speaker tripods. It just, it, it doesn't look right to me. If you do have two of these baby subwoofers, I would personally just pull them out, uh, the speakers as opposed to putting them on the side. Now, uh, I get a lot of crap for putting my subwoofer in front. The reason I put the subwoofer in front, it's not for the visuals, it's more or less because I want the bride and groom to go on top and party. But you gotta keep in mind that my subwoofer is very big. This one is a little bit smaller. You could hide it behind the table, um, but 
It looks nice. If you had the two speakers, I would just put the poles and mount the speakers on top. All right, not the best picture in the bunch. This one comes to us from DJ Troublemaker, Edward Sanchez. The scrim, I would get this up just a little bit more. I would get rid of whatever this is here. I can't tell if that's a sub or if that's a toolbox. It, this picture is very blurry. And I would definitely, definitely just get rid out of this monogram. I would not be doing self-promo like this. It comes from DJ Danny Levin. All right, DJ Danny. 11 what do we have going on here nothing too crazy here uh, I would personally at this point just invest in an all-black facade it'll look really clean with your evolves all-black facade and also uh, whenever you're drinking water it won't show on the table you did a great job as far as keeping everything nice and tidy I would have just liked to have seen a black scrim or maybe a black facade these tabletop facades I don't personally like just because they don't really do much except hide your setup and not anything else but the facade can be so much more than that you can use it to hide your drinks your cables your paperwork um, so if you invest in just a tall facade this setup would be absolutely amazing all black everything I think that'll look really dope DJ Schindler I hope I'm saying that right DJ Schindler I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name he's got the white evolves the evolves are uh, winning today. They are everywhere. All right. What do we have here? This is a bit of an awkward photo. So you got the all white going on. I would just get a facade for this setup, man. The facade I think would look really nice with the white evolves and the white setup. It'll also hide your black case of the Denon Prime. Not a fan of this at all. These lights are cool. I wish I could see what it looks like from the front. Also, this one, I'd like to see what it looks like from the front and what kind of uh, effect it's producing. GTO Entertainment, what do we have going on here? So this is something different and cool. I, I've always wanted to do this, I will say. I always wanted to set up my TVs vertical like this um you know get on that iphone wave that tiktok wave but it, it would just be a daunting task to create visuals to go along with something like this your lighting I, i'm just not a fan of your lighting uh so also not a very good photo, so I can't see your cable management. A lot of eye candy effects. That's what I call these kinds of lights that you have here on top of the totems, uh, this this ball here that you have. These are all eye candy effects that they don't really do much except create a bunch of polka dots around the room uh, that I personally don't like. You do have some wash lights here. I would have gotten these up a little bit higher. Uh, with these and then maybe just selling these and investing in two movers and just calling it a day just because uh, these eye candy effects are a little bit much. Not a fan of those. You also have uh, scrims behind the facade. You can eliminate these scrims. There's really no point of having these scrims when you have them uh, behind the facade. It's just kind of you know, doubling up on a condom, more or less. It, it just, there's no purpose to it. DJ Most Wanted from Chicago, Illinois, sends us this next photo. All right, uh, DJ Most Wanted. Uh, is that Most Wanted, like, straight out of prison, or Most Wanted as in a lot of people want you? Gotta work on that cable management. Um, also, not a fan of having multicolor lights. It looks like you might not be doing any DMXing at all. So, uh, just be mindful of that. Just have, uh, you know, one solid color, unless this is like a pride event I would, not, I would never have my lights go in different colors on the facade and uh, you also have these hot spots here that I've mentioned before the way of getting rid of these hot spots is by setting up lights here here and here or alternatively what you can do is just get a LED bar that goes across that lights up the facade a little bit more evenly and avoids these hot spots that you get here. You also got these derbies, not a fan of the derbies because they create that polka dot effect that I do not like. Honestly speaking, I would get rid of the derbies and just use these lights here and I would find some way of DMXing them all so that you have a nice synchronized show. Check out the Airstream DMX listed down below. Yo, it's me. What's up, Edgar? This is awesome. <laughs> Edgar, thank you so much. It looks like we met. What is this? Uh, Nam? Yeah, this has to be Nam. What's up, Edgar? Look at me. This was when I was skinny. Still got a little pudge here, though. I lost this hoodie. I left it at the airport. I missed this hoodie. Ah, sh bummer. Edgar, we got to work on that cable management, man. Got to work on that cable management. Uh, also, got to get these lights off the floor. I understand uh, you might not have the totems, but I would definitely invest in some totems. It looks like you have totems up here, 
but not here. So I'm wondering why you did this. This might have been a house party or you may have been tight on space. This is also a little bit weird, Edgar, what you did here. You got totems here, totems here. I would just uh, get rid of these totems, save your back, save yourself some cleanup time. Just put these on top of here, on top of here. I don't know if you had enough space, can't really tell from the photo. It looks like you have enough space to put this on top and this on top. And uh, just get rid of these. Uh, for this bottom one, I would have brought these and put them down here. And as I told all the guys prior to this setup, definitely not a fan of putting movers on speaker stands. Putting movers on speaker stands causes vibrations and I don't want your speakers juggling around. Again, this might not happen if you have super heavy speakers, but if you have plastic speakers, you could juggle your uh, your tripods around. Not recommended whatsoever putting your moving heads on your speaker tripods. Gotta get rid of them. Just keep a nice wash. Get this wash as close as you can to the speaker and get rid of this and this for a setup that's small like this you honestly don't even need these movers i know a lot of these just want to bring out everything that they own but save yourself some time save yourself some cleanup time just leave this stuff at home you won't need it for an event like this these wa these two washes here can do some real damage j impact from chicago aaron what do we got going on here all right aaron uh first thing what i notice here with your monogram so shout out to the people from colorado santa light if you want to use a projector like he's doing here check out the projector link listed below all right aaron um uh, i would invest in a gravity stand instead of using these scrims because using scrims uh, especially for something as inconspicuous as a monogram projection you don't want to have this thing stand out and this is going to make your thing stand out like a sore thumb i would also separate my speakers a little bit more you're very 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 cluttered here you definitely have some more space to play with so i would separate this stuff a little bit more dj king from arlington texas this was an outdoor event speakers are pointing downwards to keep the sound from traveling too far this was outside apartment complex all right i've never heard of that um tell me that did you guys know that if you point the speakers down that stops the sound from traveling i mean i guess because the sound is shooting straight down uh it makes your setup look funky <laughs> uh so angling your speakers is usually done when you're up high. If you're up high, then you want to angle it towards the crowd. So if you have these really high up or you're on a balcony of some sort, then you want to shoot them down at your crowd versus shooting them straight across. If you're in a ballroom and you're up high and you shoot your speakers straight across, you're going to get a super boomy, almost echoey effect, which is uh, kind of annoying. And you're also going to have a lot of headroom. It gets really loud when you shoot up high. I don't really know what happens to the sound waves when you shoot down straight like this. Uh, maybe some of you guys that are sound engineers or know more about sound. Let me know what happens when you shoot your sound like this. For a setup like this where you have to watch your volumes that you're in a place where you don't want to be too loud, I would just put them straight up and just watch my volume levels. I would also invest in a sound meter. You can get a sound meter really, really, really cheap on Amazon. For See what you did here. So he shot the speaker tripods through the... Uh, the facade to hold the facade down from blowing away. I was gonna critique you and say, why the hell did you do this? But this is actually kind of smart because this will keep your facade from blowing over, especially if you're outside. So uh, I'm assuming that's what you did and I'm assuming that you wouldn't have done this if you weren't outside. Also with these lights, um, they're not going to do much if you're shooting up because these are wash lights so they're meant to cover a wide area. If you shoot these up, you're totally losing the effect. You're not going to light up anything. So um, with these, you got to shoot them down at the crowd or even straight at the crowd. Um, this is called deer and headlights where you know you blind people it is what it is i've never had anybody complain about this when you shoot wash lights up and there is no ceiling it can't bounce off anything so essentially these lights right here are serving no purpose dj theo from the dnv dj theo sent in a bunch wow this is a nice ballroom dj theo bring me down there so i can dj in this ballroom Wow, this is a really nice ballroom. All right, Theo, uh, let's just uh, critique this one here because I really can't tell much based on the other ones. If you have a tabletop facade, what I would recommend you would do is I would recommend that you bring your own table, um, what do you call these, table skirts, this cream colored table uh, cloth. I'm just not a fan of that. It just totally throws off your... Uh, 
your setup. You did a great job with everything else. Your scribs are up nice and tight. Cables could do a bit of tidying up back here, but that's not a big issue. It looks like uh, everything is hidden. Yeah, it looks clean. Just tidy up these cables and bring your old tablecloths if you're using a tabletop facade. Alternatively, like I said to everybody before you, just get a full size facade. Carlos Moreno, all right, Carlos Moreno, here's my first critique that I uh, see off the bat. These uh, half skirts, not a fan of them, not a fan of them whatsoever. You have lighting overkill here. Uh, if you want to light up a big area like this, um, you know, I would spread these out just because these are going to serve you no purpose. They're just kind of in weird spots. I would get these out a little bit more, spread them out so you get some wash just because they're right behind the mover. So you're going to create shadows of these movers. Also with your projector, I would invest in a gravity stand. You guys have heard me talk about these gravity stands. Essentially it's a base plate and a pole where you put on the projector on top. This allows you to get rid of this uh, big tripod. Keep in mind that when you're doing monograms, the goal is to make it seem like that monogram is coming from thin air so you want to be able to hide these somewhere in conspicuous you don't want to um, draw attention to it and when you have a scrim like this you're drawing attention to this tripod you're making it bigger and bulkier than what it already is so invest in something like a gravity stand all right this next setup comes to us from mark he says he's got two setup one is at a bar so I'm assuming this one is the bar um, all right mark I'm gonna give you the the green light because you're at a bar this is not a um, this is not a private event Event. This is a public event, I'm assuming. So uh, I'm going to give you the, the green light to have a banner. Again, for private events, you can't have your logo showing all over the place. For public events like bars, nightclubs, and stuff like that, I'm okay with you displaying your logo. It is what it is. If you want to get your name out there, bars, uh, clubs, and you know pubs, things like that, that's totally okay. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt with this one. Moving on to this one, I do see that you cleaned up a little bit more. Your uh, your logo is gone. That big uh, that big business card that you have is gone, which I like. Uh, not a fan of this overhead uh, rig that you have here, just because it's 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 massive, man. It's massive. Uh, I would try to look into getting into some totems. This is a dated look. I hate to say this because a lot of you guys are going to give me crap. Uh, but this is a dated look. Uh, this is an old school DJ look having this overhead trussing rig. There are so many lights out there that can give you great effects without having to do this. These tripods are just eyesores. Everything behind you looks great. Uh, it looks like you did a great job keeping everything nice and tidy. You might have an extra laptop here for running the effects. Looks like it's a fresh facade, so uh, kudos there. Team SL Bike Life sends us this next. What what the heck is this? This is like a construction site. I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. This looks like it's more of a production event, live event, sound. Um, it doesn't look like this is a DJ setup. I'm going to have to skip this one. DJ Joe from San Antonio, Texas sends us this next setup. All right, so remember how I was talking about getting rid of the monogram so that it doesn't uh, create an eyesore? Look at what he did here. This is amazing. I wonder how he's doing it. This might be the monogram projection up here, what he's projecting it from. Um, this is cool. He, this is a really nice monogram projection. Got a cable running through here. Wow. Uh, all right, so here's what I would have done. I would have gotten rid of these scrims. I would have put the speakers on top with just the poles, getting rid of these scrims. No need for scrims when I can just put the speakers on top with a pole. You can buy the poles. If you don't have the poles, you can buy them on Amazon. And they're not very expensive. They're like 20 bucks for each pole. And this would allow you to get rid of these scrims. Again, saving you time. When it comes to lighting design, you want to have a focal point. So with these up lights here, it looks like he has four up lights that he placed on this back wall. I would have used three, so I would put one right in the middle, draw attention to this monogram, and then two on the sides. That way you're drawing attention to the center one. Alternatively, I would have spread this out even more and added a fifth part and draw attention to the center column. Whenever you're doing lighting design, keep in mind that you want to draw attention to the center one. This would look really nice if he was drawing attention to the center as opposed to having this even number. Keep that in mind whenever you're doing up lighting, you want to try to have an odd number and draw attention to a focal point in the room. Victor Gonzalez. All right, Victor Gonzalez, what do we have here? What type of speakers are these? These look like the Evolves, but these are not Evolves. I wonder what these are. 
Uh, are they RCF? Yeah, these might be RCF. I can see the RCF logo here. There's not really much to talk about here. The cables are clean. I can't really see much going wrong there. Uh, the only thing I would do is just fix this light, bring it up all the way, and shoot it up as opposed to shooting it right at the cloth. Right, Memphis, Tennessee in the building, Eddie Salinas. All right, Eddie, I always wanted to try this setup. I have to give you kudos. Um, this is cool, man. I like what you did with the TV, and then you split the split the facade up. I always wanted to try this. I always said I wanted to try this. I wanted to try this setup. I like this, man. I like this a lot. Um, DNL, that better be the bride and groom. That better not be you, man. Aside from that, this is cool. I want to try this setup. Carlos Garcia from Long Beach, California sends us this next setup here. All right, it looks like you were tight on space, man. Everything looks a little bit cramped, but I love what you did here. The lights are very even. What lights are you using here? It looks like he's using ADJ hex bars. All right, these are ADJ hex bars here. This looks like a nice uh, backdrop, man. You should have got a better camera for this one. This might have been an old photo, but... Um Man, this is a nice backdrop for your DJ booth here. I would get these panels out a little bit uh, wider or maybe investing in a fifth panel so that way you look a little bit more beefier. The setup is actually pretty good. Next setup comes from Nishan Gale. Nishan Gale says this, this setup while at home. All right, Nishan, I like that MacBook that you got there. Very nice. Um, this is an at-home setup, so I'm not going to be as harsh as I am with the other ones. I don't know what, what's going on here. What kind of events do you do? Because you got a very big mixer. This is a massive mixer that you have here. Do you do live sound or what? What's going on here, man? I would just spread the tripods out. This is uh, this is not safe. You got to get these legs spread out a little bit more. Look at this facade. Oh, okay. This is called Love Pulse Connections. Like, nah. uh, this comes from Justin and Aaron from uh, Topeka, Topeka, Kansas. He and his wife built this facade after being inspired by Dragon Frontboard Facade. This is really good, man. If you did this homemade, this is really good. But man, this thing's got to be freaking heavy. I bet you it's heavy as hell, this thing. Here's to you, man. That DIY, we need to make a video. You and me together, we make a video on how you made this together. Uh, hit me up and uh, we'll make this happen. Oh, this is the smaller version. Oh, man, you did a great job with this facade. This facade is dope, man. Good job. Love what you did here. This thing has got to be heavy, though. It's got to be heavy, and it's got to be annoying as hell to carry around. Did you set this up in your house? This is a backyard. What's going on here? It looks like he might have just set these up for the photo op. DJ Dave Gordon sends this from Philly. Shout out to Philly in the building. All right, what do we got going on? All right, first up, I would definitely get rid of this haze machine, this fog machine, whatever it is, and I would hide it somewhere else, maybe put it right here next to the table. Please don't tell me that you're trying to do dancing on the clouds with this. I've been that guy before. I have tried to do dancing on the clouds with the haze machine a fog machine and it just doesn't work you can't do that so i uh, not sure why he's got it so close to the dance floor but uh definitely move this back you have two of these qfc subs i would have just mounted these on top and i think that would really make your setup look a little bit clearer yeah, romania in the building i always love my international viewers shout out to romania all right uh i see the bear here were you drinking man what's going on here uh, he does uh, give a disclaimer that he's sorry for the drinks on the subwoofer this this is a sound system, man. This sound system is no joke. I've heard this sound system, and man, it is uh, it is a menacing sound. It makes old people quiver. It is uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's quite the sound system. Uh, you gotta work on your cable management, man. Especially here, this one is uh, a pet peeve of mine. Whenever DJs throw cables across like that, not a fan of that whatsoever. Everything else is pretty clean. It's a uh, it's kind of a simple setup, but there's a lot going on. So I like what you kind of did here. This is also a very nice venue, very nice venue. Like the stage that they put you on. All right, guys, so unfortunately, I am running short on time. So for the next couple of setups, they're just going to be honorable mentions. I'm Gregorio Sanchez from California got that all black everything. This is nice. This is dope. I like this all black everything. I always wanted to try this, but uh, I never pulled the trigger. But this all black look. I like it. Looks good. This next one comes from uh, Tinashe. Tinashe. Oh, I like that haze effect that you got going on here. Pretty dope. Just don't like the polka dots there. Dusty from CNM Music Factory sends this one. Can't really tell much about it, but it looks clean, man. Love that monogram. Whoa. Damn. There's a lot going on here. This is uh, Lucero. Lucero from Pasadena, Pasadena Texas. 
All right, wow, there's a lot going on. Why so much sound? There's a lot of sound here. There's three speakers. What, why'd you do that, Lucero? This looks like you were experimenting and trying different things out. It actually kind of works with everything that you got going on, but man, there's just so much sound. Why did you need this much stuff? DJR from Pro Audio Sound Solution sends in this next one. I like this, except that T-bar. That T-bar has got to go. Everything else looks pretty good. DJ Fader, not a fan of this uh, of this blanket here. A lot of DJs have these blankets. Also, it looks like you're using your flight cases to hold this. Not a fan of that either. Looks like you have short truss. That's why you did this. There it is. These trusses are only uh, looks like four foot trusses, so that's why they're so, they're so uh, they're so short. Get those speakers up. Get some tripods for those speakers. This is just a matter of figuring out um, logistics of your setup and trying to find different ways to use it. But you got to get these speakers off off the ground. All right, that does it for this DJ setup review. Thank you for everybody who sent in a setup for review. I'm sorry if I kind of glanced over yours, but otherwise this video would have dragged on way too long. Thank you to everybody who took the time out to send their setups. If you want to be a part of next week's video, don't forget that we are going to be reviewing DJ company logos and DJ logos themselves. So if you have a cool logo that you want me to show off here on my channel, send it in. The email is right below you. Bros, thank you so much. Let me know what you guys thought of all these setups. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments below. Thank you bros so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another one. Please help me out by hitting that that like button. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes on this video. Subscribe if you're new around here and if you really want to help me out don't forget to turn on that bell so that you can be notified next time we do another DJ setup review video. Signing off DJ Bar. Stay awesome bros. See ya.